say it's so um, it's such an honor to be a part of all of these people who have won closer to me. And I can say that I'm in my little part of the world, uh, part of that. And it's humbling. And it's amazing to get to be a part of this. And of course, I, um, I'm sure you all recognize this. Can you not? Did you not hear me before? I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot. I'm not. I'm a newbie to speaking, public speaking. Very and, and Jim are much more familiar with this, I think. <laughs> but anyhow, I just wanted. I had, if you had missed that, I would wanted to say how honored I felt to be a part of being being a Pulitzer Prize winner and joining all this. Um, here, this is uh, George Kahanic. Uh, he shot this um, when this happened when the call came out that initially the report was that 25 students had been killed at Columbine High School. Um, and of course, everybody went, uh, no, can't be, not true. But anyhow, we just uh, dispatched from the Rocky Mountain News that six photographers were sent. George was sent. He went around the back of the building and because uh, he did get all the other photographers were in the front trying positioning themselves and he went to a different spot. So that he went to a triage area and this is where he found um, this uh, Jessica, I, they found out her name later, uh, was there and found out that she, her friend, uh, uh, that many of her friends were had been killed. Uh, so this is, and as he was shooting this, he had said that he was thinking of his two children, uh, Stephen and Bradley, and they're about the same age, uh, the teenagers at the time. How did it affect our staff? Oh, um, we were all devastated and uh, about. <laughs> uh, we, uh, after covering this for day in, day out, for months and months, um, we all had to have some therapy. I can just say such an evil thing to have done in, in our country. I mean, there had been school shootings, but there were always reprisals for a girl didn't like someone or something like that. This is this is just evil. They, they plotted, they brought bombs, the, the two killers, uh, and weapons uh, to create as, as much mass uh, uh, destruction and death as they possibly can, could at the time. So when I think of those people and how they could be like that, I, I just can't even imagine someone would do that. From a middle class family, having everything that they wanted. Yeah. But anyways, um, and then uh, this picture of Daniel Roball, um, he uh, who was laying there, this was a big discussion at the time about whether or not to put this in the newspaper. Um, this was, um, was this, this is Rudy, um, um, Rudy's picture, I think. I mean, he's, I, he was up, put up in a helicopter, and he got this shot, um, which was telling the whole story, but there was Daniel Grobaugh. Uh, we didn't know, of course, who that was. We just knew it was a student at the time. And, and if we publish that picture, the family's going to know. They're going to know before the police tell them. So this was a hard, hard decision in the news ultimately they put it in. And, and this George was also in this triage area where children, students are finding out and comforting and consoling each other. As they went. Students were running, 1,500 students were escaping. The police were there, the SWAT teams were there. They were trying to make sure that the perpetrators were not um, amongst these students, hiding in these, with these students. So they had to stop them, frisk them, make sure there was no weapons, and hold them in a certain area to make sure. But they, these students were running out as the SWAT teams were running in. There was like a, several different SWAT teams. SWAT, some SWAT teams went in and they found the two perpetrators who were involved. Isn't fast when we shot film, not digital? <laughs> the images are grainy because it's actual film. Yeah. And th that's also the uh, a big, a, a big thing that happened that we had one of our editors 
he, w he went down, he drove like a maniac down there. It was a 40 minute drive and he made it back with the film in about 20 minutes with a police car with lights on behind him as he pulled into the parking lot of the Rocky Mountain News so we could get that film in the machine and get it going because we were, wanted to get this out. And this, these pictures, and if you see some of the clips over there, these pictures, especially George's picture, um, went everywhere. As you see here, the SWAT team members are, are, whole, are trying to make a safe getaway for the students that they were going out. Okay. Um, I don't know if I'm talking too long, but we don't have to be Yeah, let's go. Let's get talk about let's keep going. going. So, um, anyways, so anyhow, so film was a very, <laughs> it's a very different world now. Uh, this has been a much different thing with uh, logistical challenges were involved. Um, uh, and when we were there, we keep on going, um, the students were, were, weren't uh, allowed to be with their parents yet. The parents were in a separate area, held separately, and they're finding out the, the horrible tragedy. Bombs are going off, by the way. Explosions are happening in the building. As the police, <coughs> their car was uh, booby-trapped there were bombs in the hall in various places that they were going to be driving. So this is just a horrible feeling as, as uh, captured here in these images. They're comforting each other. The students are going to each other for the comfort to find out why, why, what, why would someone do this to us? As a staff, we were sent out all over the city in all different directions to cover this event. There was multiple hospitals involved and photographers had to go to every hospital, had to go to every home we could get their hands on, a name or a, a victim, and so we went all over the city, right? Yes. In the air, yeah, we, we covered this from every angle we could find. Fine, yes. There was like four different hospitals that we all went to. Uh, just to, uh, this is just to point this out. I was shooting this <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> like a half an hour before uh, this, and I got the call, as, uh, there's been shootings. You've got to go over to the Colonel High School. And I, and I was, okay, I'm out of here. You know, normally, you know, these little things, you know, you're sitting for a little while, shooting, getting the light just right on these little things. Flip, 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 go, go. And the reporter said, what? What about my stuff? <laughs> what about my story? This is fine. We got it. Good. <laughs> I'm out of here. And so I raced out um, to, uh, I went to one of the emergency rooms. And, um, and this is one of the parents trying to get back in to find their, if their child was on the list. No one knew. There was a report of 25 students. Uh, as it turned out, it was 13 that were killed. One was uh, a teacher. And, uh, and this is uh, a, one of uh, Rudy Gonzalez shot this. Um, the, this is the second day of the event and the students were finding out who was, had been killed. And, and, they, and this one is Rachel Scott. They're in the parking lot for students. The senior parking lot was off limits, but the parking lot for the underclassmen was here where they sent the media to go to. So we were all there in this parking lot and the kids were there and they, were, they couldn't get up to their school, but they, they were circling around Rachel Scott's car around the other student's car that they knew that they would never, ever see again. And they were praying and, and uh, wanting to, to be a part of that, of, of being together to come console each other. And of course, the, the media had been sent there by the, the police said, you guys go here to this parking lot. So all the TV and all the media, and by the way, this was national news, everyone was there. I mean, it was just a crazy situation. And then the media was accused of sneaking into the parking lot where the kids were. And I said, no, the police told us to go here. But, and every, this is what happens. They're, they're mad. People are mad that this happens to their children. And they're mad. And you're, as the media, you're the recipient of that anger. You get that all day long from these people. They're mad at you. They don't want to talk to you. They don't, they're, they're concerned, they're grieving, of course, and that's totally understandable. But then they want to blame you for things that happen, and you just gotta, 
just take it and just understand that that's what's going on. It's not you that just don't have a place to take that anger. And this is a memorial service, the first one. Up on the hill, they had put crosses up for all those who had been killed. There were you know, 13, uh, 12 students and one teacher, and then the two perpetrators. And uh, there was a huge stink about having two crosses that represented the two shooters. Oh, yeah. And now that don't want to exist, and they ended up taking those down. But, yeah. but this made the Pulitzer cut because it was such a powerful moment. And so, you know, when they first went up. Mm -hmm. you know. Some felt like we were forgiving them the perpetrators who did this. But as time went by, the anger, okay, then they took the two down. She's making a note on the cross of uh, one of the perpetrators. Hate breeds hate. A lot has come from Columbine. We no longer, uh, you know, disseminate the shooter's names. You notice uh, people are reluctant to even publish the name of the, uh, the perpetrator, right? And that came from Columbine. That was that was a direct message from the victims of Columbine. Mm -hmm. And it just every time they heard that name, it just filled them with hate, fear, mourning, reigniting, you know. Well, the other thing, too, too, that is a lot of these people who do this want a notoriety. They want their name out. And that's, and we don't want to give them that satisfaction. <coughs> and that's Isaiah Scholes, that's Fallon Schwartz, who I think went to school here. She now went to school. Okay, she graduated, she'd been wounded. There were 23 students who were wounded. And some very critically, I think she still has them. And this this is um, my image. Um, they were taking down the crosses. They were cleaning up the area. I was sent there to go take pictures. And um, so the, the crosses are gone. And it's the you know, time for healing. Kind of funny uh, when I had submitted the National Press Photographers Association as a book contest, and I entered that, and um, the judge said, well, that I had moved the stones to make the heart look broken, that I had done something. I don't say I would never do that, <laughs> but anyhow, they gave me the first place on it anyways. I don't know why, but anyhow, I had done something so unethical. Here's how some of the clips look. How many assignments do you think you shot? Columbine assignments do you think you shot in your career? Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. Two or three a day for the first three four months. I, I think over 200 over the years and the memorials. Um, there was all the stuff uh, at the time too. The following week, the NRA had a convention in Denver. With, this is the famous Charlton Heston. Take this right out of my cold hand or something, whatever, great, whatever thing he said. And so that was happening at the same time. And Daniel Mauser, um, uh, his, his father, um, Tom, was a huge advocate. I think they had some clips over there uh, about uh, his trying to get um, gun safety regulations. We'll have a Q&A after the three of us talk. Yes, I'll let 